bond markets are pricing higher yields with expectations of higher rates for longer as inflation remains sticky, with the RBA raising 25 basis points on Tuesday and the Bank of Canada raising last night. Lachlan Meakin from Go Markets joins us now to offer his take on what's happening in the markets. Lachlan, thank you so much for joining The Pulse this afternoon. Hi, Danielle. Yeah, so uh, we are looking at bond markets really starting to move and adjust to this uh, higher rate for longer narrative. How do you see this RBA uh, rate hike that really surprised markets on Tuesday? Yeah, another one. I mean, um, after after the last meeting, I'm surprised the markets got wrong-footed uh, again like this. Um, um, there was a lot of reasons I think they would hike. I mean, that, that high CPI figure, um, housing Markets seem to have bottomed out and even rebounding in some places. And they've been pretty um, explicit with uh, how resolute they are in getting that inflation figure down. So uh, I, I think that um, a lot of people weren't surprised by it. Uh, it seemed to make sense. Um, the Aussie dollar reaction is, is as you'd expect with most of the market being offside. We did see a, a pretty sharp rally in the Aussie versus the US. We're testing uh, above that 67 level. A little bit of a pullback yesterday on some of that weak data of the GDP, the Chinese data, but uh, we re- resume that rally again today. So Aussie dollar is still enjoying that. There's certainly a, a, a tailwind from the RBA. Um, and Bank of Canada, very, very similar situation to Australia. I mean, it went into that with the market mostly pricing in a hold there as well. So they've, um, with similar language in their statement about um, activity being a bit stronger than expected, higher CPI, a, a tight labour market, um, restarting their, their rate hiking cycle to two after a five-month break. So um, same reaction we saw in the CAD as we did in the Aussie, a, a, real, a strong push-up in the CAD. Um, and that's also looking to, to test the ranges that most of the currencies have been in for a while, to be honest, the last few months have been very low volatility. So anything exciting to get some of those ranges broken, I'm happy with. <laughs> Absolutely. Get some, uh, as you say, volatility back into the markets. But over in the US, um, increasingly traders are, are starting to discount a potential rate hike. I think it's over 50% for the US in the July meeting. So are we potentially looking at um, you know, a more hawkish Fed, which of course would boost the US dollar as well a bit? Or how are you seeing with these uh, next week's Fed and ECB meetings? Yeah, the Fed's an interesting one. Uh, I mean, the the hike odds have rose, uh, risen quite a lot this week, just after the RBA and, and after the the Bank of Canada. I think it was just over thirty percent for a hike next week, but almost fully priced in for a twenty five to be done by the end of July. So, um, as far as next week goes, I'm I'm thinking it's fifty fifty. A lot will depend on the CPI and PPI out early in the week. I think that's probably what will um, move the needle on on that. If I had to a bet, I will, I'm, I'll say they are going to hike. I think that um, the central banks are, are being a bit underestimated in how determined they are, it seems, to get inflation under control. But if they do hike next week, I, I think that might be the last one. They've, they've got their break in August. They'll, they'll, they can sit back and wait till September, see how it goes. Um, US dollar obviously will get a, a boost from that. But um, I'm not real bullish on the US dollar going forward past next week. I think um, it, it got a real tailwind off this debt ceiling uh, shenanigans that went on uh, and you saw that against all of its peers it outperformed for that few weeks and since that's been settled um, the US dollar has come off a bit and I think that any kind of boost it gets from the Fed hiking next week will probably be short uh, short lived uh, because the market will, will then start pricing in a Fed cut later in the year which they're priced in by the end of the year there's going to be at least one and, and that's definitely a possibility. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Because one would think uh, they might have to start breaking a few things to make them cut. But nevertheless, what about the ECB? Yeah. Because, you know, what's happening over there? You're not, they don't have a lot of economic growth. Um, I think even Germany's in recession. Um, yet, uh, are they looking to, you know, raise, or what sort of a hawkish tone coming out of the ECB as well? Yeah, I mean, they've, the market's pretty much pricing in. It's a done deal for 25 next week, which is more than likely what the case will be. But um, macro data since their last meeting's really given a lot more to the doves and the hawks uh, since then. As you said, the, the, the German recession, um, a real slowdown in, in some indicators in confidence in, in inflation. Um, 
so it'll be interesting to see how how hawkish or not they are in that statement. I think the rate hikes are a done deal. Um, whether there's one more, which is what the bond markets are currently pricing in, um, that'll be where the repricing is depending on uh, on what they say with that. Um, the euro is really just sitting in a holding zone too. I think that's it's even more boring than the Aussie dollar at the moment, just <laughs> sitting that kind of 108 to 111 level. Um, it really needs a catalyst. And I think next week with, with the ECB, um, the Fed, um, there's, there's certainly that, there they could be that impetus to get it out of that range. But um, yeah, I think the ECB would be interesting one to watch. It's, it's one, of those, one of those rate decisions where the statement's going to mean more than the actual decision. Um, and, and just next week as well, I, I shouldn't forget to mention the, the Bank of Japan is, is a, a bit of a dark horse. They've, um, you look at the dollar yen sitting at that 140 level, which is that critical level where we've seen a lot of selling, um, hoping that the Bank of Japan comes in and rescues the, the shorts there. But uh, there is a chance they may fiddle with their yield curve control. That's on Friday. So certainly one to watch there as well. I mean, Bank of Japan meetings normally don't do too much, but what we saw December last year, they, they do have the possibility to, to surprise. So, yes, an interesting week next week. I'm looking forward to a bit of volatility, to be honest. A bit of volatility. What about, um, you know, the China yuan? It's a bit of a out-of-field question, but China's had such a spluttery uh, reopening. It hasn't been as strong, and you are seeing... Um, some stimulus starting to go through the banks there. They've been asked or they've been lowering their deposit rates, I believe, in the last couple of days to try and get the consumer out to do more. Do you think China could come out with more of a stimulus package? And would that have much of an impact, do you think, on you know those yuan, US dollar rates? Uh, certainly, I mean the, the figures just say pretty weak, and the reopening story, um, you know, the, all the optimism from that has, has kind of fizzled quite a bit, hasn't it? So um, I haven't read a great deal about that, though. I'm sorry, I, I can't talk too much about the stimulus. Um, as far as yuan goes, I it's not a currency, being that it's um has its rates set. I, I prefer to watch currencies like the Aussie dollar, the Kiwi dollar, how they react to the China story, and and, and obviously any stimulus coming out of China will be Aussie dollar positive. Um, I mean, Aussie dollar really is just a proxy for global risk uh, and the Chinese growth story, uh, the con economic story. And the RBA, as much as it gives it a tailwind with, with things like it did uh, on Tuesday, um, that they really are do play second fiddle to that. So certainly for Aussie dollar traders, keep an eye on that, you know, the, the, the China story, absolutely. Yeah, well, it's very much interesting times at the moment, as you say, Lachlan. And um, yeah, uh, yes. well, you know, it'd be good. Um, well, certainly there hasn't been a lot of volatility in equity markets. And as you say, not a lot of volatility um, so much in the currency yeah. markets. Well, you see, um, I mean, you see where the VIX is for the equity markets. It's, it's crazily low. And there is another index the CME puts out, the, the CVOL uh, FX uh, index for volatility, and that's at levels that were last seen before the Ukraine invasion. So, um, the one thing I guess one class of traders that does benefit from that low volatility is the carry trade, which is uh, um, obviously buying the higher <coughs> higher yielding currency, and selling the lower yielding without that risk of too much uh, movement of the actual exchange rate. So that's definitely also been a, a real headwind for the for the yen. Um, uh, also, an interesting one as well, if anyone's interested in some of the exotics, is the Mexican pesos are being an absolutely gangbusters on that carry trade lead recently. So if you've got a higher t risk tolerance, have a look at that one. <laughs> so what are they doing? They're, they're basically um, borrowing in Mexican pesos, are they? And and is, is that how it works? I'm not great on carry trades, I have to say, with an equities background. <laughs> uh, no, the other way around with the Mexican pesos, so you're borrowing US dollars and buying Mexican pesos, which are yielding 11.5%. Uh, uh, they've, they've risen their rates 15 times in a row. So um, in, a, in a high volatility environment, that's it's a risky trade because the exchange rate may go against you more than what you're earning in the interest. Um, but when there's a lot of really low volatility, that's when you really see these carry traders come out. And if anyone has a look at that US dollar Mexican chart, they'll see what I'm talking about.